I've covered countless disturbing stories from Reddit, YouTube, TikTok and other sites on my channel, but there are few places on the clear net that are as truly depraved as 4chan. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most shocking, troubling and downright disgusting posts on the site. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to gain access to uncut videos and other perks, or you can leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video will contain discussions of topics that some might find triggering, including murder and sexualization of children. Viewer discretion is advised. You can become a Kofi member to watch an uncut version of this video, which features a whole extra entry that was too disturbing for this cut. Starting out relatively mild compared to some of the later posts, we have the tale of Fridgebro. Around 2015, a 4chan user made a few posts describing the shocking state of his home and the depression he experiences that likely caused him to live like this and results from him living like this. One of his posts in September 2015 read, More stories because you guys asked. Every night, browse 4chan on phone in bed. Drain flies attracted to light, so they bounce off phone. Get fed up one night and sob into pillow while drain flies bounce off my head. Dining room table is completely covered in old dishware and beyond mummified food. Plastic milk container rots and explodes. The smell was the most unpleasant thing I've experienced. As I'm walking my dog one day, I keep him outside. A neighbour awkwardly asks why my windows are so dirty and why I still have Christmas stickers up from like four years ago. Just forgot, haha. Get thick ones and puke all over the toilet. Fall asleep and it's sticky and shit when I wake up, so I leave it. It's still there and I hover on the toilet. Fridge won't shut, so it gets filled with bugs and rotten shit. Shove it into a corner and use mini fridge for a month. Eventually take a discarded fridge from neighbour's curb while it's night. Old fridge is still there. The only time I talk to people is when my neighbours say hello while I'm walking my dog every now and then. I have no real friends and no family and I'm going to be found a rotten husk in my computer chair surrounded by filth when a government worker comes to see why I haven't picked up my neat books check for the month yet. Anybody want pictures? Someone shared this post on Imja along with the pictures and they're absolutely sickening. There is rubbish everywhere, expired food, unwashed dishes and pans and god knows what else covering the kitchen surfaces, the floors, the dining table, absolutely everywhere. I can only assume OP doesn't actually cook in his kitchen anymore. You can't even see the hobs under all the crap. Even the toaster has a food wrapper over it and some unidentifiable stains on the outside. The pans with the mouldy, solidified remains of food clearly aren't fit for use anymore, so I guess OP is just living off takeaways and junk food at this point. The bathroom clearly hasn't been used for washing in for a long time. The bath is filled with rubbish and even pans and it's covered in grime. The sink is even worse. It looks like he puked in it and left the plug in. The liquid is a weird brown colour and of course there is rubbish floating in it and dirt around it. OP stated that every once in a while he'll boil some water and scrub himself with it. There's also a photo of the toilet that OP admitted to puking all over, so I assume the marks on the seat are exactly that. The inside doesn't look any better. I don't even know if it's been flushed since the last time he took a shit in it. 
I can't even bring myself to describe much more, but you can see from the photos on screen just how bad this place is. One user commented the following. It's not ruined, it's got an eco-friendly patina preserving the structure. Mold and fungus are basically the backbone of the house. It lives and breathes, and on a hot day outside, the temperature is 12 degrees cooler outside and the air 80% more moist. It is its own ecosystem of some very niche organisms that have all come together to form a wonderful symbiosis that started a sealed system of ecology. It's quite amazing, really. The whole thing is one giant organism. I'm betting that the organisms living there have evolved a defence mechanism to any new intruding life form, so it achieves a self-reliance. Together with its own immunity, I am willing to bet that by adding a source of food, you can grow a self-sustained ecosystem that would serve as a repopulation nucleus in the case of a full-on doomsday scenario, such as an all-out nuclear war or asteroid impact. You are doing your part to ensure some form of survival for life. I really don't know whether to laugh or cry at that, to be honest. Anyway, Opie had shared a photo of the inside of his fridge. Judging by the state of the rest of the house, I'm kinda surprised this wasn't even worse. I mean, it's definitely not even close to being clean, and there's half-empty bottles of liquid, perhaps milk, that have curdled and turned a vile colour, but to be fair, it could be worse. Other users noticed a tub of sour cream and begged him to open it perhaps somewhat desensitised after seeing the squalor shown in the other photos, or curiosity just got the better of them. He posted a photo of the inside of the tub, and it's probably exactly what you'd expect. Yellow and brown goo, with what I assume is mould growing on the side, and what appear to be flies swimming in it. I don't know what possessed him, but he decided to microwave it. First posting a photo of it before, then another while the microwave was turned on, set to 1 minute 30 seconds. The final image on the Imgur post was some slimy brown liquid on a wooden surface that could have been mistaken for diarrhoea. I don't know if this was the aftermath of the microwaved sour cream or something else, but either way, it's absolutely revolting. While some of the comments on the thread were kind of amusing, like the one about the ecosystem, in all honesty, this situation is anything but funny. It's actually really sad. OP seems to have just given up. In fact, he likely gave up a long time ago. The state of his home right now is not something that just happens overnight. I've seen photos of the effects of hoarding before, and I guess OP is some kind of hoarder. But notice how the photos don't show any actual personal items, there's nothing but rubbish and dirt. Hoarders often buy or acquire a ridiculous amount of items and find them hard to get rid of because of sentimental value, or because they're convinced they'll make use of the items somehow, one day. They actually have a strong emotional attachment to the objects. But as for OP, there's nothing in those photos that could be viewed as sentimental or useful. There's no items that might give him a little bit of happiness when he comes across them, even in a counterintuitive way. It's not that he's emotionally attached to these items, he just has no motivation or reason to live in a hygienic environment, and that's even more sad when you think about it. It's easy to judge those who live like this, but people don't try to understand why. They have no sympathy, and these attitudes often make people like OP worse. It pushes them further into solitude, unable to see a way out, and so they deteriorate and feel too ashamed to ask for help. The state of OP's home is nauseating, but he is still a human being who deserves to be treated with compassion. He's clearly suffering with depression and perhaps other problems too. He said himself he has no friends or family, and the only time he has any human interaction is when his neighbours say hello when he walks the dog. I wouldn't wish such a miserable life on my worst enemy. It's quite heartbreaking to think that OP probably wouldn't be living like this if his other circumstances were different.
I never actually use 4chan. I've briefly visited it maybe three times when I've been researching a topic for a video that was investigated on there, and each time I've been left shocked at how depraved many of the users seem to be. You could come across a disturbing post, and chances are the comments are going to be even more disturbing, like the one we're about to cover. In September 2012, a user shared a photo of two young girls, stating that one was his friend's daughter, and she has a large bra size, but the problem is, she's 13. He said he can't take too many photos or it's weird, as if it wasn't already weird. Regardless, he ended up sharing two more photos, where she appears to be sat in the backseat of a car, and in another she's lying on the floor, unaware that some degenerate creep is posting her online so other degenerate creeps can fantasise about how they'd groom her. Next to the photo, he wrote, I want to eat her so bad, lol. If this had been posted elsewhere, you'd expect the comments to be full of people condemning such a disgusting post, but this is 4chan, so of course, they encouraged him. They asked for more photos, somehow rationalised that she can't be classed as a child if she has that bra size, and stating that she is 13, so technically he wouldn't be a paedophile if he went there, as if it's not still morally reprehensible. The most unsettling replies were those that suggested how he could go about having contact with her. Some suggested grooming tactics, while others encouraged him to just go for it, while she was asleep or after he drugged her. Here are a few examples. Get alone, make small flirts, generally increase, if she's not into it then back off. You can deny hitting on her and play it off as just being nice and argue she was exaggerating. If it works, f*** her. It's not rocket science, OP. Give her attention, but give her attention the way a king would give a subject. Always move the interaction forward, usually. It's a simple flowchart from talking, occasionally touching while talking, physical, tickling or teasing, hugging, affectionate kisses on shoulder and forehead, f***ing her. Anytime she is uncomfortable with a new stage, acknowledge it, move back a stage and move forward again in five minutes or next time you see her. You'll probably be f***ing her in a week. She's out of your league, OP. Even though she's an ugly bridge troll, you'd be better off grooming the fat one. Her low self-esteem will make her eager to please you. Just picture the cute one while you're riding the blubber. While the majority of the comments were just as creepy as the original post, if not worse, there were a few pointing out how messed up this is. Some even suggested tracking this guy down and ruining his life. I'm not entirely convinced they were all considering this because they wanted to do the right thing. Some just seem to love the potential drama that might ensue. Either way, if anyone could identify this man and warn his friend that OP might be trying to make moves on his underage daughter, I guess it's a positive outcome. One user actually checked the EXIF data of the photos, which gave GPS coordinates of where the photos were taken. From here, others posted screenshots from Google Maps showing the house itself, which was located in Tennessee. The locations of the nearest schools were also shared, as well as email addresses of people who work at the school, with users encouraging others to email them and warn them about this. The thread eventually died, and I'm not sure if anything came of this. As far as I'm aware, it's not like OP could get arrested for posting these photos. It might be highly inappropriate, but the girl is fully clothed, and unless he actually had inappropriate contact with her, he didn't actually break the law. He could easily play this off as a joke, albeit a sick one, to the police, and claim he had no intention of actually acting. Either way, I don't doubt that at least some users did contact the email addresses and probably the schools too, so let's hope word got back to OP's friend and that OP no longer has access to the girl, even if he didn't face any legal consequences. In December 2007, a user started a 4chan thread stating, 
Later today, I'm going to bring my rifle to Von Moore Department Store at West Roads Mall, Ohama, Nebraska, to try to beat Cho's high score. I'm going to go out in style. Hope he was referring to Sung Hyu Cho, a 23-year-old South Korean man who killed a total of 33 people, including himself, and injured 23 others in what is known as the Virginia Tech shooting. It happened on the 16th of April 2007, just a few months before this post, and is the deadliest school shooting in US history. So Opie's reference to this event is certainly concerning, but of course, people make wild claims on the internet all the time, so who was to know that this wasn't just another attention-seeking threat that would never actually happen? While a couple of the comments accused him of bullshitting, some actually encouraged him. These included, Do it. Go for it. 4chan is behind you all the way. And, You have to do it in a school or it doesn't count. The last thing these users expected was for this to actually happen, but turns out this wasn't just an empty threat. Shortly after his post on 4chan, 19-year-old Robert Hawkins entered the Von Mar department store, scanned the area, then turned around and left, without arousing any suspicion. Six minutes later, he returned with a semi-automatic rifle that he'd stolen from his stepfather's house, got into the elevator, stepped out on the top floor and opened fire, killing eight people, then himself. Six other people were injured. The victims included both employees at the mall and customers. All this happened within the space of about six minutes, and it was over when the police arrived at this time. It would be fair to say that Richard had always been a troubled individual. He was hospitalized at the age of four after persistent violent behavior in preschool. He apparently had a chaotic home life and was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and PTSD. The day after his 14th birthday, he threatened to kill his stepmother and so was sent to a mental health treatment center. Here, he was diagnosed with an unspecified mood disorder and oppositional defiant disorder. For around four years after this, he became a ward of the state of Nebraska and was eventually discharged after showing no improvements. The year before the incident, he became estranged from his parents and decided to move in with two of his friends and their mother, who described him as troubled and stated that he was depressed after being sacked from his job at McDonald's and because his girlfriend broke up with him after he cheated on her. This had happened only two weeks before the shooting, so it was likely the final straw that caused him to snap. It's messed up, but hardly surprising, considering it's 4chan, that some of the users on Richard's post were encouraging him. It sounds like he'd already made the decision though, so they probably didn't actually contribute to it. You could argue that it'd just push him even further if everyone was telling him not to do it. He wrote a note right before the incident, part of which read, I just want to take a few pieces of shit with me. Just think though, I'm gonna be fucking famous. Richard's mother had actually given the note to police just one hour before the incident, but by this time it was too late to prevent the events that were already unfolding. Judging by part of the note and the 4chan post, he clearly reveled in the notoriety, even if the fame would only come when he was already dead. So if commenters on his post had begged him not to do it, he'd probably want to do it all the more. The next post we'll cover is a terrifying story told in July 2013. Let's just jump straight into it. I don't know what to think. This happened to me a couple of hours ago, and now that I'm calm, I'm on B because that's where I like telling people my stories. And yeah, I know I'm probably stupid for picking up strangers in my car, but I figured small girl equals not dangerous. So it was about 1.30 and I was leaving my girlfriend's house. She lives north of town, so kind of rural, but not out in the sticks or anything. Houses space probably half a mile apart. Here it goes. 
Driving home early morning hours. Most of my driving I do really late, so I'm not too spooked by the dark countryside. Windows open, blaring music from my phone through my aux cable because I'm a dick. I text while I drive because fuck you, phone is at 10%. Drive maybe 5 minutes and suddenly phone dies so music shuts off. Look up and I see some movement in the road, slam on brakes. Looks like animals in the road. Two huge, and I mean huge, fucking dogs in the road, tearing something apart. I mean, these dogs had to be at least three and a half feet, just standing on all fours. Their backs came up to my car window. Anyway, I get closer and they just ignore me. Roll up windows, lock doors, because of course dogs can open doors. Honk my horn, the dogs stop, just stare at me, blood dripping off of their mouths. Honk again, they don't flinch or anything. Maybe a minute, two minutes of them just staring at me, they suddenly sprint off. Slowly roll forward around the animal they were eating. Wait another couple minutes trying to see what it is from the car, can't tell. Get out with my flashlight. Anxiously approach corpse with my knife out because obviously I can kill two huge dogs with a four inch blade. I'm not a farm kid or a country kid, but it looks like a horse or a cow. These dogs seriously killed this big thing. It's completely stripped of skin, but the disturbing part is its eyes. Still intact, still bright and not clouded, and scared looking. This animal was completely terrified when it died. Noises in the bushes off the side of the road. Nope.jpg into car I go, floor it. Swear I hear howling, but probably just me being scared. Alright, so naturally I was freaked out so bad, but another 10 minutes roll by and I'm thinking, that was actually pretty cool. This is a sweet story to tell. Driving, music back up, charging phone in car adapter. Phone shuts off while charging, so my music stops again. There is a four-way stop up ahead. Slow down, rolling stop, YOLO. As I start to accelerate, I see a person walking on the left side of the road. Young girl, maybe 14 or 15. Probably 4 foot 11. 150 centimeters for you euros. Immediately terrified. You know, for me, it's the things that are not inherently scary that are the things to fear. When my friends and I are out in the woods at night, I conjure up images of women in white dresses, little kids running around in the dark. That's what's truly scary, something that is just out of place. A young girl alone on a country road at almost 2am is pretty damn out of place. But then I think about the dogs, and I hate myself for this, but I thought, can't leave her alone. Roll down window about 4 inches and say, hey, are you okay? She turns and looks at me and just shakes her head no. Dark brown hair, long down to her elbows. She was wearing kind of baggy clothes, dark grey pants and a black shirt but no shoes. Hey, it's okay, what's your name? I'm so skeeved out, I'm sweaty and shit. The girl walks up to my window and I can see tears running down her face. Hey, do you want a ride somewhere? Did someone hurt you? Just shakes her head, yes. She walks around to my passenger door, gets in and just keeps crying. She's just staring straight ahead, not looking at anything. Silence, silence, silence. So is there somewhere you need to go? Friend, parents or something? No response. Should I call the police? No, she said it so adamantly and turned and stared right into me. Her voice was really mature sounding and actually pretty cute. As far as looks, she was probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for the youngness and the scary circumstances. So we drive another couple of minutes, I keep asking inane questions. She starts to answer in ways other than moving her head around. Name, Garvey, never heard it before. Age, 16, I was a bit off. Reason for tears, wouldn't say exactly, but someone hurt her arms. She showed me some gnarly bruises, handprints and shit. Where she lived, down the road. 
Where to take her? Just into town, please. Interests. Ride horses in competitions. Okay, everything is going pretty chill. Show her some of my sweet tunes. She smells a bit for the first time in the car ride. Her talking about horses makes me think about earlier, so I decide to ask her what she thinks about the dogs. When I tell her about the dogs, she yelps. I react by slamming on the brakes. We're stopped in the middle of the country. A copse of trees is on either side now, so it is really dark. She's blank white, staring at me. Where did you see them? She's practically yelling. Hey, hey, it's okay. What is the matter? I can't let them get far. What do you mean? This girl is frantic. She is trying to get out and I grab her arm, forgetting the bruises. Don't touch me, she screamed, and I realise I grabbed her. Like I was just trying to help this girl out, and I realised that I shouldn't have grabbed her arm, but when she screamed that at me, she had more anger in her eyes than I have ever seen before. And yeah, she was a small girl, but I was more afraid of her than when I got mugged a year ago. She opens the door, gets out, and I notice she has bloodstains all over her. I thought it was just a design before. She yelps again, stares at me, and sprints off into the trees so fast. I'm in shock, just totally confused and terrified. Howling. Nope, nope, nope. This girl is going to die and I'm okay with that. Floor it. Get home. Lock doors. I live with my stepbro and he isn't here for some reason. All alone. Yeah, so basically I'm just sitting here in my living room freaking out about every little noise outside. There was scratching at the door earlier, but it was just my cat. Okay, so now the scratching is back. Not sure what to do, considering cat is on lap. The micro USB in my car is fucked, and it only charges if you hold the cord in, so it kept falling out. I live in Illinois. She said her name was Garvey, but I don't know how to spell it. Okay, there's growling or rumbling or something, but it's not storming, so... Take pics? Or... My door has bars, so I should be good. Okay, there is a dog on my porch. It's just some dog though. It isn't the same ones, but it's scratching and trying to get in. It's freaking me out though. Can I legally shoot it? Sorry, camera phone. I'll try another, but it's just sitting there. It isn't scratching or growling anymore, just patiently waiting, and that's worse for my mental health than it making noise. Jesus. This is so eerie. I don't drive, but if I did, stories like this are the exact reason why you'd never catch me driving alone on a country road late at night. Of course, we don't even know if the story is real. The only proof OP posted was a photo of their front door where a dog was waiting outside. I can't exactly blame OP for not taking a photo or a video of anything on the road. I'd probably be panicking way too much for that to even cross my mind. But as a result, there isn't much to back up the story, so I guess it's up to you whether or not you believe it. Anyway, if it is real, I really feel like OP should have called the police. The girl he picked up was 16, looked like she'd been assaulted by someone, and was clearly shaken up by whatever had happened. I don't blame him for not running after her when she bolted, but she clearly wasn't okay, and who knows what could have happened to her after that. Her reaction to him mentioning the dogs seems to imply that the dogs were hers, or belonged to someone else she knows, and when she said, I can't let them get far, that probably meant they were very dangerous, as the circumstances that OP saw them in also suggest. I don't know what the link is between the dogs and the bruises and handprints on her arms, clearly inflicted by a human. To be honest, the whole encounter is terrifyingly baffling, and I wouldn't know where to begin with trying to make sense of any of it. As for the other dog that was scratching and trying to get in when OP returned home, this was probably just a coincidence. He even said that it wasn't the same as the ones he'd seen on his way home, so I really hope he didn't end up shooting it. That'd be horrible. What can we expect, though, from someone who, thinking this girl was 14 or 15 before she clarified she was 16, said, 
As far as looks, she was probably a 7 or 8 out of 10. Typical 4chan user right there. Anyway, I don't really know what to make of this, so let me know in the comments if you have any theories. We've already covered the story of Robert Hawkins in this video, but there have been countless other murderers who have posted about their crimes on 4chan. In November 2007, a user shared a photo with a simple caption. If anyone can correctly guess their own post number, I will tell you where she is buried. After a few users tried and failed to guess their numbers, one finally succeeded, and so OP delivered. He replied, Winra, here you go, before sharing the coordinates of a location in Kansas that appeared to be a bit out of it, the nearest city being El Dorado. The victim turned out to be 18-year-old Emily Sander, who had disappeared from East El Dorado on the 23rd of November 2007, six days before the 4chan post. She was seen leaving a bar with 24-year-old Israel Mariles and never seen again. Israel was a waiter at an Italian restaurant and was staying in a motel next door to it. Shortly after Emily's disappearance, police found blood in his motel room and Emily's car was still parked at the bar. Israel had been driving a rental car and it was found abandoned on the 27th in Vernon, Texas. This was presumably the vehicle that he had used to transport Emily's body before he buried her. Police found Israel on the 19th of December in Musquiz, Mexico with his 16-year-old girlfriend Victoria, who was pregnant at the time. When police spoke to her mother, Sandy, she revealed that Victoria had called her on the 24th to tell her that Israel had been involved in an altercation where another man tried to rob him. Sandy believes that Victoria thought she was going to Mexico with Israel for a vacation, but a couple of days later, she texted Sandy saying she had a lot to tell her. He was arrested and taken back to the US, where he was charged with capital murder, rape, and aggravated suicide, as well as aggravated indecent liberties with a child, as it was suspected that he was the father of Victoria's unborn baby. In March 2010, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for Emily's murder, and although he tried to appeal his sentence in 2013, the court upheld his conviction. There aren't actually any official reports online linking the 4chan post with the discovery of Emily's body, so it's not clear if it had helped police find the body or if they were even aware of it. The details line up though, the coordinates posted by OP are consistent with an article that states that the body was found around 50 miles away from El Dorado, and the post was made shortly before the body was found, so it'd be a huge coincidence if OP wasn't actually Israel, unless he'd told someone else what had happened and where he hid the body, and that person was OP. Another minor detail that is a little disturbing is that it came out after Emily died that she was an online adult entertainment model, and that's not the disturbing part. The media were accused of blowing this detail out of proportion, insinuating that her disappearance was related to this side job she had, and the site she posted such content on criticised this, in addition to stating that the site drew significantly more viewers after her death. I get that people will be curious, but it's kinda sad that she lost her life in such a horrific way, and as soon as people found out about her adult content, that's what became the focal point. The site was later redirected to a memorial for her. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments, plus any other 4chan mysteries you'd like me to cover in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my Kofi members and channel members whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week in a new video.